This is a video tutorial to guide you through the day-to-day -day use of ACTI's MVR 3.0 software. So first you want to go ahead and open up your icon. Uh, what you can do here is you can go ahead and type in the server IP, the port. Uh, you can also type in your account and password. And to make things easier, you can go ahead and actually save this as a particular uh, server. So we can save it as this name, hit save. And then the next time when we log in, when we double click on it, we can just click on the server that we want and it will automatically put in the IP address and the account. And if you wanted to remember the account and password, then you can also check that off uh, when you hit save. Okay. Then uh, we want the initial page to be the live view, not the playback. Um, uh, so we go ahead and log on in. This is what we call the live view. You'll see these three tabs at the, on the side. The first tab is uh, the live view and the second tab is the playback. Those you will be using on a day to day basis. So your cameras will be here listed on the side under camera. If you don't see them, it could be minimized like this. You just want to open that up. OK, then you can click and drag the camera that you want out to the screen. And then we'll go ahead and set that up for you. If you want to see the higher quality, okay, for example, this one is on the lower quality stream right now. If you want to see the higher quality, just click on this button up here, media two, click on media one. It will go ahead and toggle over to the higher stream. All cameras are on default stream one, but just in case you want to, you have it on stream two, you can toggle it over. Okay. All right. And so uh, on this live view, okay, uh, you can obviously see all your cameras. You can uh, see your cameras in different layout styles. Okay. Let's say we wanted to see in uh, three by three. Okay. If I click on all cameras, it will go ahead and set my cameras up uh, to show both of them. And if I have it in that three by three uh, layout, it will look like this. So let's say I really like this three by three view, and this is what I want to keep as my default view whenever I log in. So I want to click on this button up here, and it's for the creating the view. I can uh, give it a new name, put it under a particular group that I want it to be under, and then I go ahead and hit apply. And when I do that, new view two is right here. If I want this to be the default view when I log in, I want to click on this button to set it as the default view. If I want to make my own layout, so here if we click on the extension button, we can see all the different layouts that we go ahead and supply to you. But say you want a different layout, you can actually do it yourself by clicking on this button here for edit view. And you will see these uh, triangles show up in the bottom right hand corner. Basically, if you drag this, this will become one whole view. OK, so let's say I want my camera like this to be one whole view. And this is the layout that I want. So you can also custom design your layouts. So after that, if you find that this is not what you want and you want it to go back to what it was, you want to click on this button here to reset the view. OK, and then you want to click on this button here to save the view. If you want to patrol through your cameras, you can click on this button here, say view patrol, and you can do an instant patrol. So let's say I had pages and pages of cameras. If I just click on instant patrol, it will start patrolling through all of my cameras. Uh, some other functions you might want to use on the live view, okay, is uh, for example, if you right click uh, on your camera, right, you'll see a couple options. Let's say uh, you want to go ahead and bookmark a particular occurrence that you saw on the live view. You can go ahead and click on bookmark and this is uh, what will show up and you'll be able to search your bookmarks later if you'd like you can also go into you can go into the playback mode you can start manually recording the uh, camera you can do uh, digital zoom if that's what you want to do instead of the optical because this is a PTZ camera you can also take a snapshot of what you see you can turn on the digital outputs you can do audio out basically this default hotspot is just whatever camera is supposed to come up first in case there is an event that happens and so that would have been uh, already set up you can also remove your camera by right clicking on it and of course, the manual recording buttons are also down here. You can also audio broadcast and again, snapshot and bookmarks. They're all down here. All right. And then, of course, there's also what we call instant playback on the live view. So basically, if you just hover over your camera, you'll be able to see uh, the instant playback. OK, so if you just click on play, you can start clicking and dragging and just get to an easy access of your playback without even uh, getting into the playback itself. Let's say you have a particular TZ camera on the live view. This camera, okay, is our PTZ camera. So if I go ahead and open that up so you can see it better. If I minimize the event tab, okay, the PTZ tab will be able to show up. From the live view, you can go ahead and uh, PTZ this camera. All right, so if I want to uh, go in, if I want to go out, I can do it all from the live view.
I can also, if I want, uh, go ahead and digitally zoom in if my camera doesn't have uh, PTZ functions, okay, but I, I can still digitally zoom in. So for example, if I want to uh, zoom in on this car here, I just click and drag over the screen and it'll go ahead and zoom in. You'll see this picture within a picture. Let's say I want to go back to the normal view, okay, you just want to right click within the red box here in, inside of your zoom in zone and then it will go back to the normal view. So in the same thing in the playback, Okay, you can also zoom in, but again, it is a uh, digital zoom in, not optical, no matter what. So let's say I have a particular spot, and let's say there's something in here that I want to be able to see. Um, then I just, again, click and drag, and it will go ahead and open that up for me. If I right click, it will go away. And that's about it for uh, the live view page. So let's go ahead and uh, go into the playback. So again, whatever cameras are on the live view, it'll automatically show up here in the playback, but you can also click and drag additional cameras to the playback. This is where your cameras would be, okay, and these lines represent the recordings of the camera. This camera is rec recording based on full time, that's why you see one whole bar, and this camera is recording uh, based on motion, which is why you only see it sometimes. So you can click and drag on this recordings here in order to be able to go to a particular time uh, while seeing the view. Uh, or what you can do if you know a particular time and date that you want to jump to, you can click on this calendar button here go to and type in the date and time. Hit apply and it will go ahead and jump to that time. Very basic, this is the play button, the pause button, rewind, this is to jump to the very next recording, this is to jump to the last recording. And let's say you've gotten really lost, you don't really know where you are, but you want to just go to the current time, you want to go ahead and click on this arrow here to go to the current time. When you play it, you can play it back at different speeds. So if you want to change the speed at which it is playing back, right now it's uh, one to one, all right? You can speed it up by clicking on this button here. You can slow it down as well, depending on what your preferences are. You can see the timeline on different time scales by toggling this setting all the way up to one day and all the way down to a 10 minute interval. So you see these green lines here, these, if the cameras are set up for motion and it detects motion, that is where those green lines represent where the cameras uh, detected motion. If you don't want those green lines, go ahead and go over here to the right hand side, you see this little green man that says motion. If you unclick that, all the green lines disappear. This is for all your bookmarks, your digital inputs, should you have any. This is if you want to get rid of the time track. Say you have a camera with audio, if you want to hear the audio, you want to go ahead and click on this volume button here so that you will be able to see it. So let's say you found a particular spot on the playback that you really want to export. What you want to do is you want to right click and then you can either take a snapshot, okay, and it'll save to your computer or you can export the video. Let's say you know you found the spot where you want to export, okay, so the time duration will automatically be in here. It's two minutes. The camera that you want to export, you can export the video as two types, uh, AVI or RAW. RAW will be faster, okay, but you will have to use the ACTI archive player from the download center in order to play it back. AVI will take a little bit longer to export, uh, but it is playbackable by things such as like the uh, Windows Media Player on your computer. The good thing is, is if it's an AVI file, you can also put text on it if that's what you want. And then here is just where uh, you browse for where you would like to save your file. So let's say I want it to the desktop and then I hit apply and then it'll go ahead and export the video. In addition, if you do choose to export as a raw file, the file size and the export time could be as little as one-tenth of an AVI file. In addition, it'll be time-coded and completely unaltered, which is important for legal purposes. The only thing is, when you have a raw file, you will have to download our archive player in order to play back the raw files, and then if you want to convert them to AVI later, uh, you can use our media converter. So where do you get this archive player and media converter? You want to come to our website, www.acti.com, Click on Download Center, and then right here on the left-hand side where it says Global Search, go ahead and type in the words Archive Player. Go ahead and filter out the results, and this is what you want to download here, and the user manual is right here, but it's pretty much straightforward, and that's to uh, play back the raw files. And then if you want to convert it later on, you want to use the media converter. So again, under Global Search, you type in Media Converter, download this file, and then use the user manual here. Okay, and the second way to export your video is instead of right clicking on the video itself, okay, you can right click on the time bar here, all right, and I can say I want to mark the export start, I can let it play, and then you see how it's becoming orange, and I can also click and drag it, 
Okay, uh, so let's say I get to a particular spot where that's where I want the exporting to stop. I right click again, tell it to end, right click one more time and tell it to export the video. And then the time duration that I just selected in orange will automatically be in this time duration here. And so that's the second way that you can export the video. If you have any other questions, all of this is in detail in our administrator manual and user manual on our website, okay, www.acti.com. Just click on downloads at the top and you'll be able to find the manuals that way. Uh, if you have any questions, you can also feel free to call tech support at 1-866-410-2284.